Final Fantasy XIV is a massive game with thousands of hours of content. What I'm going to do here is break down some of the major plot points for those of you who want to know more about Eorzea but may not have time to experience it all firsthand. Today we're tackling the first part of the Eden's Gate storyline from Shadowbringers. After beating Hades and destroying the light that corrupted the first, Reen and Thancred head into the Empty, the land that had been wiped out by the Flood before Menphilia could halt its advance. With a balanced return to darkness and light, Reen has begun sensing a massive concentration of light. Not knowing what it is, she comes to get you just in case as a light warden. You, Reen, Thancred, and Yurianje hop into the Sky Slipper and head out into the Empty to discover just what is causing it. Staying in the empty for too long can cause you to turn into a Sin Eater, so the investigation will be done in parts. Your group rides for a long time before finally finding what Rain had sensed, a Sin Eater, an incredibly large Sin Eater that's made entirely of light. The very first Sin Eater. Urianje had been trying to find out where the flood had come from and he figured that it came from a single being. That thing is what Rain had sensed in the same monster that Menphilia had fought a century ago. But with the creature still being alive, it can undo all of the work that you and Menphilia have done to save the first. Urianje, however, believes that it can be used to restore the first. Rain names it Eden and Thancred decides to set up camp so you can get ready to study the first Sin Eater. He heads off to scout the area and when he returns, you plan your next move. Rain thinks that what the Flood of Light had done was stop the flow of ether to everything in its path. But the ether wasn't destroyed, only made dormant. If Eden was able to stop the flow, then maybe it could be used to start it back up again. And Rain thinks that she can control it. Thancred is skeptical of the possibility of Rain being able to control that level of power. Urianje, however, doesn't believe that it is as far-fetched a plan as one might think. He's come to the conclusion that Menphilia stopped the Flood of Light's advance by putting Eden to sleep instead of destroying it for just the purpose that Rain suggests, but it will still be dangerous. Rain wants to try it anyway. She's been studying Eden since you arrived and it seems like the light is concentrated at its core. If her guess is right, then she can use its core to restore the etheric balance. Urianje proposes that by using Ethernet shards as beacons, you could trace the ether flow to Eden's core and secure a means of teleportation into and out of the beast. But before you can do that, Reen has to study the Sin Eater's interior so you can chart a safe path. Once there, Urianje will set up a means of communication and hopefully control of the creature. Thancred points out that it is unlikely that Eden will enjoy having you, quote, rummaging around in his innards. Eh, you probably should have came up with a better way to say that. Uh, so he recommends that you lead the way. Rain doesn't want to put you in danger, but with you being the only one who can safely take down Light Wardens, there isn't much choice. There is indeed a defense system in place, and huge amounts of ether rush to the core when you arrive, taking on the form of a smaller version of Eden.
After surviving some attacks that definitely should have killed you, like being shot with an energy beam that literally takes you into another galaxy, you bring down the Guardian. Rain is pleased to see that you didn't absorb any light with your victory, and with the path being clear, you can use Ethernet shards to teleport into the core. True to his word, Uriange sets up a device so Rain can communicate with Eden, and she jumps right into it. The Senni to resist, but Rain fights with it and gains control, even though it did rise into the air and try to fly off. Since there's no rest for the weary, not long after Rain gains control, a whole lot of somethings invade Eden. Thancred and Orianje head off to deal with the enemies on the inside while you head to the top to fight the big boss, as usual. Eden can manipulate ether to make simple structures, so Rain uses it to make something for you to stand on during your battle. Unfortunately, it can't make any weapons to stop you from having to fight at all, but you have to use what you can get. The attacker is a flying beast holding a warrior in a suit of armor. It's an odd fight filled with strange creatures, but you win, as usual. Thancred and the others meet you up top and inform you that the things that they fought were unlike anything that they'd seen on the first. Before they can say more, the armored warrior gets up and shouts about how she won't let you do something before she clutches her head in pain and passes out. Rain checks to see if she's alive and discovers that she is, but her ether is very strange. Whoever she is, she seemed angered by Rain taking control of Eden. She's not a sin eater, but she is very powerful. She could be a dangerous enemy, but she could also hold useful knowledge about Eden. Thancred decides to continue his role as a babysitter by keeping an eye on the girl until she wakes up, but he's not going to bring her to the core since he's pretty sure that was where she wanted to go in the first place. Instead, he takes her to your camp. Meanwhile, you, Reen, and Uriange return to Eden's core, where he tells you what you should already know. The creatures that the girl was summoning were void sent. Reen couldn't sense any light from her, and she reminds her of Emmett Selk, although she's not an Ashian. In any case, there's not much more they can figure out about the girl until she wakes, so Reen returns her attention to improving her control of Eden before the next surprise shows up. And that's where we're going to stop for now. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next part of the story.